We're talking 2017's Get Out. All right, I'm Joe. I'm Ethan, and one of us is going to love it. One of us is going to hate it. Let the coin decide their fate. I love it. I hate it. And hey, guys, don't crack your fucking heads open because there's spoilers ahead. All right. Sorry and for the swear. Oh, thank you. Uh, this movie currently holds a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Not 100. Out of uh, 50 reviews, only got one negative review. Uh... And Joe, Not since you, 150, it's 146. Joe, since you hate the movie, uh, this first question is for you. This comes from Amy Nicholson of MTV News. She says Jordan Peele is so attuned to the tiny ways race sneaks into conversations that we hear it in every line. So, how do you feel about the racial undertones used in the film to progress this overall story? You have one minute. I thought they were unnecessary, so I don't think they necessarily. I don't think they progressed the story at all. Um, I think they were just kind of in there as asides, as him attempting to make a larger social commentary, um, but it, it just wasn't there because it was too simple of a movie. It was just a straightforward horror thriller movie, which is fine. But when you're trying to embed these social constructs into a movie like that, it comes off sounding hollow and fake, and it seems way too forced. And I think that's the thing. It's just like a movie like this. You want people to go in and enjoy them. Like people want to enjoy horror movies. Like people enjoy being scared when they know there's nothing like actually lurking around the corner. But for this movie, he's trying to like, I don't know, pump it full of just political rhetoric that we don't like necessarily need. And it just further divides the conversation. Um, let people enjoy things and not focus on stuff like that. Okay, uh, thank you. Ethan, you have 30 seconds to respond. To say that the racial undertones were unnecessary is like saying that Rosemary's Baby was just a movie about witches and not nothing to do with sexism. It's like saying it's like saying whatever. Guess, saying Guess Who's Coming to Dinner is about a dinner party. It's absolutely necessary. This movie is the slasher horror genre, but the villain is white liberal elite racism, and that is what makes it scary because it's tangible. It's it's universal. It's every every person of color and every person of not. Ethan, I'm going to have to stop you there, the scenarios. I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank you. Joe, you have uh, 15 seconds to respond. I don't think face-off with brains is necessarily tangible. And on top of that, later in the movie, he says, why me? Like, why black men? And they say, it's nothing about black men. Like, you guys just happen to be the ones who keep coming. Like, like Stephen Root says that. He says, it's nothing about the color of your skin. So it's okay, just thank embedding you, Joe. these thank you. falsities. That's like... Ethan, go ahead. That's like the, the, the peak of the racism in this movie is when Stephen Root goes out of his way to say, ah, I'm super not racist, but I'm going to take over your body, which is what this movie's about. Spoilers. So everybody goes out of their way to say, I have a black friend. Yeah, I am not racist. Stephen, Stephen okay. Root, That's what Stephen everybody Root, says when okay. they're racist. Stephen Thank you. Uh, I'm over, Joe, I'm he, sorry. Joe. He's taking over the body because he's a photographer. It has nothing to do with the color of his skin. Please don't over talk me. I will cut off your mic. But why does he have to come out and say, oh, it has nothing to do with your race? You don't have any more time. That's the problem. That he takes that step to say it. You're talking about two different scenes, by the way. Okay, Ethan, this next question is for you. This comes from uh, film critic Armand White of the National Review. Uh, favorite of the show. Love he, him. He says, in Get Out, just as Obama did, Peel exploits racial discomfort, irresponsibly playing racial grief and racist relief off against each other, subjecting imagination and identific identification to political sway, and also says, uh, reducing racial politics to trite horror comedy is an Obama movie for Quentin Tarantino fans. So basically, he hates this movie and thinks it's bad for a movie to, you know, bring up racial tension that is happening in our culture today. Uh, why do you think it's important that this movie actually brought it to light? You have one minute. Um, because we're white and other people aren't. Um, because it's something that exists in the world around us in every which way that we look. Because it's important to understand how we come across to other people, how other people who try not so hard come across to other people, and how other people interpret what we're trying to do. It's very important to understand everybody's perspectives, and that's the whole point of movies, that's the whole point of literature, that's the whole point of art, is to understand and empathize with somebody else. And if you can't do that, there's not a much of a point. You know, you get to watch a guy get stabbed with an antler, which is awesome! As Joe says, you know, take away the racist undertones. This movie's still a rad horror movie, but you add that in and all of a sudden it's a piece of art. 
Okay, uh, thank you. Joe, you have 30 seconds to respond. So this is, I'm not, I'm not saying that like these racial tensions don't exist in real life because of course they do. I think we can all agree that racial tension definitely exists in real life and there are disadvantaged people and marginalized groups. All of that, yes. 100%, but this movie is a horror movie that is, like you just said, piece of art, it is pretentious. It is shoving this stuff in just to try to heighten it to some sort of like shitty like exorcist, Rosemary's Baby level, and it's just not there. It's too streamlined of a horror movie. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, Ethan, you have 15 seconds to respond. It, 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 it. Okay. Okay, so the point you're saying is pretentious, but the thing is that this movie is taking a, a very trash genre and it's making that audience also see something at a heightened level. Like, it's not pretentious, it's actually accessible okay. to people thank who you. normally would not be accessible Ethan, to this conversation. All right, Joe, you have a final 15 to respond. Uh, you don't need to, like, try to inject a social commentary to elevate a movie. Look at John Wick. John Wick took a trash, sure, like, genre, like you just said, and they didn't have to throw in any sort of, like, racist undertones because it was just a movie that did it really well and get out could have done it really well but okay, it uh, made itself thank pretentious. you thank you uh joe ethan you have a question yeah just five seconds may i he uh, yes. got an extra 15 in the other question well that's true but you hey, made if, you, if you keep interrupting i'm gonna give him 20 minutes to speak so you can go ahead and nobody calls john wick art it's fun if this movie we can call it art but if we don't call it art and we take away those elements it is still fun so this movie is john wick but elevated beyond that okay thank you all right, we're going to open up the floor for discussion. You guys have four minutes and go. Just because you call it art doesn't make it not pretentious because it definitely is pretentious when it's beating us over the head so hard on the social commentary it's trying to get across. But the movie... Look, the movie Can't when, that when be get, scary when, in itself? No, when you get down to it, the movie is a horror thriller with some bits of comedy. With racism nothing, as the villain. No, racism is not the villain. The family that cuts people's you heads know, it, open it's, it's and like, take over bodies is the villain. It's like you watch The Witch. The Witch isn't necessarily the villain of that movie. It's the family's absolute... Jesus Christ, The Witch is the, the villain. No, it's the, the family's witch, devotion. The, the witch to, steals a baby and fucking smashes it in the first scene. Who the Fuck do you it's the family's the devotion is. to the religion that makes that movie scary. That makes a family get torn apart. Well, that makes it's the, the family it's drama. It's the racial tensions in this drama. movie that aren't necessarily intentional on either part. That I think they very it draws much, attention to, and that's what makes this movie suspenseful. They are very much intentional. Otherwise, why would they keep abducting? I'm not talking like, about the movie males. being intentional. I'm talking about those people. I know. I'm talking because about they those go out people. of because they go out of their way to say. So you're so you're saying it's unintentional, but yet you're also saying it is intentional because they're actually taking black males. So what are you even trying? to say i'm saying what's unintentional is or what's saying is intentional is them going what out of their way them going out of their way to say i'm not racist and what? in doing so it draws attention to their unexpected racism the racism that they, they don't think that they have racism. They are targeting you already said they're not racist men. because they're targeting people because they are superior not because they're black you said they're not racist. You can say that, Ethan. You did. I did not say that. Absolutely not did. Not even a little yes, bit. Yes, you did. I think you were inferring things from what I was talking about before. And now I feel like you're reverting back to our Oscar streak. And it's just getting uncomfortable again. Okay. Uh, how'd you guys really feel about the movie? This movie is incredible. Absolutely wonderful. Yes. Go see it. No, it's... it's uh, I mean, pretty much everything Ethan was saying, like, essentially, it's it's the symbolism of what's happening. Um, I think Armand White or somebody else. I was looking at something else, or mm -hmm. Almond or Howard. What is it? Uh, um, or it was somebody else, and it was basically saying like, these are just like fabricated moments. Like this, this like this kind of stuff doesn't happen. It this does. is no, exactly. And that's the thing. It's just like, no, nah, man. Like, just because you're like. A white guy surrounded. Oh, okay, so it definitely wasn't Armand White that did it. So it was just like this other guy was just like, just because you haven't like directly experienced this or even tangentially experienced by seeing it happen to somebody else, does not mean it doesn't actually exist. And um, since I have, like, I know that it's actually there. And you just have to take. You can't. You can't like scrutinize a marginalized group's like words and say like. That stuff doesn't happen to you because I haven't seen it. Like you, you have to like. That's something that you just you believe when they when they tell you stuff like that. Because like, why would they lie? I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. Um, before I speak on this, I am just gonna let it be known that 
I can only speak on what I've experienced as being a young person of color and can't speak for everybody's experiences because there are probably people who have experienced a lot worse than me. Uh, so this this movie kind of hit hit the nail on the head, like. Uh, the opening moment of uh, the character Dre walking around talking on the phone and he's like, you know, I'm on the street and I don't know where I am. Like, I'm a black dude in like a an upper white suburb. Like, how bad does this look? And then this car just starts following him. And he's telling himself, not tonight, not tonight. I'm just going to turn around. And then the car keeps following him. It's like, that's that's a very real thing that happens to, you know, People of color being in an affluent neighborhood, people immediately, it seems like, assume, you know, that you're there for the wrong reasons and that you don't have a reason to be there. Like, I've been followed by, uh, quote unquote, like, neighborhood watch because I jaywalked and it was very uncomfortable because I was like, this could escalate very quickly. Um, the moment with the police officer asking him for his ID like was definitely like a thing because it seemed like the police officer was making uh, the character Chris, you know, the villain of that scene when he was just in a car with uh, a, a white girl, which is, you know, people don't like that. And then the movie, it doesn't really like slow down in pointing out like the way some people are either like blatantly racist or subtly slash like unconsciously racist like uh like when chris meets the dad for the first time and the dad is immediately calling him my man every couple seconds i was like oof that's how long's this thing been going on yeah like that's definitely like someone who doesn't know how to deal with like a person of another like race like speaks to him because you think that's what they want to hear but no you just want to be talked to as a person um well also sorry to interrupt but the uh little blurb that you put up on our Facebook I thought pretty much nailed it too like that was a very concise oh, yeah. accurate way to describe this movie yeah um I think one one of the the lines that really stuck with me was uh when Chris and Rose are talking to the parents about how they hit the deer and the dad's like ah oh, deer I hate deer they're like rats every time I see a dead deer on the side of the road I just think one down a hundred thousand to go like you could put a different race in that sentence and that's exactly how like like racist people like will sometimes speak they'll see like you know a young black male get killed on tv and they just go ah good another one down like it's and people don't really think about that like a lot of i'm sure a lot of people went in this thinking it was just going to be kind of like a, a straightforward horror thriller film which for the most part it was it just you know had the discussion of racism and uh the line with what we don't know is an auction for Chris with the uh, the fellow going, um, what does he say to him? He says, oh, being black is in fashion. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you look at a lot of music now and like mainstream culture, it it's essentially cool to, you know, be black, but without, you know, the struggle of being black. Like, look at people like Macklemore and Iggy Azalea, like, uh, Mac Miller, it's like they're banking off of hip hop culture, but then you know, as soon as something involving like a black person or a Hispanic person happens and it's on the news, they're nowhere to be found. Like, mm -hmm. where has Iggy Azalea been during any like murder of a black person? People are out marching, you know, they're speaking their truth, and she's just tucked away with her money, and it's. It's a sad state of affair because it's like, yeah, that line kind of nailed how some people view like black culture. And I mean, I don't know how many times I've been around like young white males at parties and there's been like a hip hop song and they're openly just like screaming nigga, like along with the song. It's like you don't understand like the, the volume of what you're doing and the way you're acting. And it kind of blows my mind in this movie. Uh, did a really, really good job, at least in my eyes, of kind of exploiting that. So, I mean, it's definitely going to be my top three for the year. So I, I think everyone needs to go out and watch it because it, it's a really smart movie at the end of the day. And Jordan Peele did a phenomenal job mm -hmm. with it. So, bravo. I could, yeah, I could very well see this being the best movie of the year. Thank you for talking about that. Of course. So, you know, we don't have an authority over anything like that. Yeah, like I said, neither do I. I can only speak well, I to that I feel and experience. Right. I wanted to ask you guys, who do you think the intended audience of this movie is? 
everybody. Because okay, because well, it yeah. kind of reminded me of the uh, the SNL skit that they did with was it Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle yeah. right after mm-hmm. the election? Yeah, where they were just like like Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock, like all the white liberals were like, "What's happening?" And they're just like, "Are you kidding? Like, of course this was gonna happen." And it just kind of seems like that's kind of what this movie is is doing on a much deeper like more entertaining level i feel like and stop me if i'm wrong but like a person of color can watch this movie and be scared because of the realistic interactions and uh you know person of not color can watch this as a sort of reflection and self-reflection of oh my god do i do things like that and that's just as terrifying yeah i think no not just as terrifying but like that makes the movie terrifying i know know what you meant i was was gonna say i do agree that this movie is kind of made for everybody and there is something to take away from from uh you know chris and his point of view and then like the way the family is acting before we figure out what's really going on no and like like ethan was saying and like essentially what you you said like this movie like works on that level but also like the john wick level like this is a really great horror thriller movie and like when it ramps up and you find out what's 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 happening you're just like oh shit like this is like this is like rosemary's baby kind of stuff Like, this is just a really well-constructed, well-made horror movie. Yeah, um, I listened to Jordan Peele on a podcast after the movie came out, and that's essentially what he said he wanted to do. He wanted to make that old-school style of horror where there was actually a point to what was going on and a message, and he talked at length about Rosemary's Baby, so... No, no, it's a a slow burner, which I... I mean, that's the only kind of horror movie I really like, Mm. so... All right, well, what would you guys rate it? I also just want to say oh, yeah. yay for symbolism in this movie. I mean, moments. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you know, it goes from overt where, like what you were talking about before the bingo auction, where it's they're basically sizing him up like a slave auction. But then it goes into, you know, he has to literally pick cotton to be free at the very end. Sorry for spoilers. I didn't even, like, note it. Like, I, I didn't I, pick I didn't cotton that. to free himself. Oh. The, the movie right. works. There's a lot of thought in it, and well done. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Bravo and Good eye, that, Ethan. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the first person to notice that, but thanks. <laughs> no, uh, no, ten out of ten. A lot of lot of thunder. Absolutely, ten out of ten. It's I'm still thinking about it. I hope to be thinking about it for a long time. Yeah, I was gonna give it a nine, but like reflecting on it, it's it's up there probably now as one of my favorite movies I've seen. So no, 10 out of 10 my only issue with it is a bunch of bullshit jump scares, but like that's think, the genre. There, like, if yeah, you're making a, a Blumhouse movie, and, like, you that, have to. So that the music was great. Um, the jump scares weren't too bad. See, like you knew it was kind of coming. So, um, yeah, no, I, yeah, it's great. Okay. Thanks. Oh, oh, comment below. <laughs> If you got a movie coming up in the future like Logan, uh, go ahead and request it in the future, and uh, we'll go ahead and do that one and write us a question that you'd like us to debate about on the next episode, and Unpaid Inter Jeff will ask that question. All right, well, thank you and good night. Bye.